when the Buddha taught meditation to his son, he taught him breath meditation. But even before he taught breath meditation, he taught him a few things to think about. How to think about inconstancy, to think about not-self. That may be surprising. We tend to think of those themes as themes of discernment that you use after the mind has settled down. But there are times when you need to think before the mind can settle down. You've got to think in the right way. If you're thinking in the wrong way, you can't just bring a stop to things. In other words, if you're thinking in ways that tend to branch out and create more thoughts, and then more thoughts based on that, you need some tools to put an end to the process. You need thoughts to counteract your thoughts. That's what the teachings on inconstancy and not self are as you're trying to get the mind to settle down. Whatever you're thinking about that's not related to the breath, you've got to realize okay, it's not going to last, and you're not going to last. Sometimes you make plans for tomorrow or next week or whatever, and who knows? You may not live to see tomorrow or next week, at least not in this body. And that right there can put a stop to things, or the things you plan and try to execute. You realize there's a lot of things that are beyond your control. Which is what not self essentially is all about. So why not work on things that are under your control? After all, we don't know what you need to do in order to prepare for it next Monday or next Wednesday. Because there's no guarantee that your plans for next Monday or next Wednesday are going to come about. But you do know that whatever you're going to do, you need mindfulness, you need alertness. You need qualities of ardency and discernment. So that kind of thinking brings you back to the breath, where you can develop those qualities. This is one of the ways in which discernment leads to concentration. You see it's in the different sets of the wings to awakening. In some of them you have concentration first, before discernment. But in others, like the seven factors for awakening, you've got discernment first and then concentration. The discernment there is analysis of qualities. Now the analysis here doesn't have to be very elaborate, but just the recognition that some qualities in the mind are skillful and others are not. Skillful in the sense that they have good results. So this is another one of the ways you can analyze your thoughts to bring the mind into concentration. Just see where they're going. The Buddha describes this in one of his suttas where he says he got onto the path when he realized that instead of thinking about his thoughts in terms of their content, he tried to think about them in terms of what mental state was provoking them and where they were going to lead. They were provoked by sensual desire, ill will harmfulness. They're going to lead in a bad direction. If they were provoked by the opposite of these qualities, renunciation, goodwill, compassion, then at the very least they wouldn't be harmful. But then he realized if you thought about good things like that, it wouldn't cause any harm, but it would tire the mind out. And that recognition that the mind needs to rest after developing skillful thoughts. That's what brought him into concentration. So this analysis of qualities is basically that kind of analysis. When you step back from your thoughts, you see where are they going? Look at thinking as karma, not as pictures of the world as it really is, but the activity of the mind. Thinking about the world. It gives you a different perspective on your thoughts. 
step back and see where do these lead, what are they useful for? Are they really useful? And John Cha has a nice comment in one of his talks. He says, you want to look after yourself. And what does it mean to look after yourself? Is keep watch on yourself for when you're lying to yourself. Because you can lie your way into all kinds of thoughts. It's when you take the attitude of really being serious about your thinking and earnest about wanting true happiness. That's when you can st start catching some of the lies. Say, I've got to think about this, got to think about that. If I don't think about it now, I'm going to be dealing with things in time. For the time being, you've got to put that kind of thinking aside. I mean, there are times, of course, when you do have to get things done. There are deadlines, and you have to make sacrifices for them. But right now, as you're meditating, put that thinking aside. The only thinking that's useful is the thinking that puts a stop to the thoughts. And that's what right effort is, or the quality of persistence that builds on analysis of qualities. And the mind can begin to settle down. That's how you get the qualities of rapture and serenity or calm, concentration, equanimity. Otherwise, you get the mind so it's willing to put its thoughts aside. And then you can be with the breath, and it's through working with the breath that you can create that sense of refreshment or rapture, which in some cases may be strong, in other cases may be weaker. But it gives you a sense of, I'm here where I belong, and it feels good. And there's an energy that comes with that. After the energy has brought things into balance, then you can be calm and concentrated. So if you find that you have trouble settling the mind down, maybe you need to do a little thinking first. Thinking about the processes of thinking, thinking the kind of thinking that puts an end to your thoughts. The kind of discernment that brings you to concentration. Because these two processes, concentration and discernment, have to go together. You have to understand the mind to a certain extent to get it to settle down and to see things really clearly. The mind needs to be still. So you use what discernment you've learned from the past or learned from Dharma talks and apply that to stilling the mind. And then once the mind is still, then you can start seeing things for your own. This point is made again and again in the teachings of the Ajahns. John Mahabhava devoted a whole book to discernment fostering concentration, because it goes against the usual textbook explanation, which is that first you do virtue, and then you do concentration, and then you think about discernment. But as John Munn pointed out, and then John Lee copies this down in Craft of the Heart. All three of these qualities have to help one another along. Your virtue is not going to be pure until you've got some concentration and discernment. Concentration isn't going to be solid until unless there's some discernment. And even in the sets of the Wings to Awakening, they put discernment at the end. Discernment is what solidifies everything else. The Buddha's image is of a roof that you're building, and you put the rafters up, and then you put the ridge pole on top of the rafters. And until the ridge pole is there in place, the rafters, even though they're there up in the air, they're not all that secure. It's the ridge pole on top of them that secures the, the rafters below. It's the same with discernment, even the, the type of discernment that comes after mindfulness and after concentration is what solidifies all the, the qualities of the practice. So remember what discernment is. It's the ability to see your mental processes as mental processes, to step out of the worlds of your thought 
and see the process of world building in the mind. And developing a sense of dispassion for it. To realize that you'd be better off right now getting the mind still and dropping those thoughts. So that the mind can gain the, the benefits that come from being centered. Having a sense of refreshment and calm inside. To heal the mind. and to prepare it for even deeper insights.